Let's talk DAC amp combos. We know all about separate components. Let's talk about smashing some components together. Two commonly paired components, a DAC and a headphone amp. Uh, in this case, let's also make sure that they're balanced. Balanced circuitry, balanced inputs, balanced outputs. So two class leaders, two fan favorites, right at that $500 price point, the ship Jotunheim and the monolith, super sexily named 124459. <laughs> Gotta begin with the Jotunheim here. Shit is a super fun brand um, based out of California. Most of their stuff, I guess, is at least assembled in the US. Um, heavy metal um, I'm, I do like their chassis these uh, gray silver powder coated uh, frames with this uh, bent or extruded piece of brushed aluminum on top uh, so yeah so what are we talking about we're talking about um, balanced DAC amp combos uh, there's a bunch of things in this category in this class the two that we're looking at today are both weighing in at about the $500 price point. The interesting thing about the Shit Jotunheim is that um, they sort of bill this as um, an upgradable, configurable device. And so when you go on their website to buy it, um, it starts at $400. And $400 gets you a balanced headphone amp. Now, if you want to make it a DAC amp combo, you have two choices. You have the um, AK4490 uh, DAC module, or you've got their multi-bit DAC module. So over here, you can see we've got the little USB, this little plate right here. This is basically the little interchangeable module portion of it. Besides um, the two different DAC chip options, there's also a uh, phono stage that you can get, which is pretty cool if you wanted to hook this right into your record player, uh, either use it as like a pass-through phono stage as well as a headphone amp, or just have a very dedicated analog listening setup. Um, otherwise, in the back, you've got um, uh, three-pin XLR balanced inputs. This is your pre-out, as I mentioned before. Interestingly enough, I, I don't know if you can pass the DAC out of the pre-out so you'll have to double check me on that but I'm pretty sure I've tried that and it it doesn't work for whatever reason I'm not the smartest guy so maybe it's me uh, and then you've got some single ended inputs and outputs um, power supply is on board so you get the just the SA you want to call that um, chunky 3 pin and a power switch which is clicky clicky and delightful uh, front side very simple device. You've just got your uh, whatever your module is, your balanced inputs, your single ended, and low and high gain, and then your uh, quarter inch and your four pin balanced uh, headphone out. Um, I I love this thing. I, I've, I've had it for um, I feel like two years now. Listen to it against a lot of different headphones. Primarily with balanced cables, I have done some listening with the quarter inch, but most of my experience with it has been through the balance side, and I think it's 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 just got um, a lovely warmth to it. It's it's a very thick sound, um, so if you take something to me like say the Focal X that sounds a bit thin and clinical, very smart, very dynamic. Um, but at times a bit bright and sometimes a bit grating and you put it on this guy it warms it up it softens it up it gives it some punch um, I think I mentioned when talking about the Mr. Speaker Aeon flows that's also a very dry very clinical um, closed back planar and that headphone I had a hard time finding a good match for until I put it on here and um, cranked it up to high gain and then I finally sort of found what that headphone was about um, so I, I think that, that you know as a 
as an amp, this is a great amp. Uh, if you, especially if you like sort of that more powerful, pushed sort of um, alive kind of musical vibe to your solid state amps. Um, for both these amps, I listened to them across a bunch of different headphones. Um, Aerodynamics, some Hi-Fi-Mans, some Grados, uh, Sennheisers, Fostex, just a, a myriad of things. And I think the characteristics that I describe will ring true across pretty much whatever you plug into them, um, with a couple sort of minor exceptions here and there. So like I said, this guy starts at about 400 bucks once you add the um, uh, AK uh, 4490 DAC module, that's a hundred bucks, so that's a $500 unit. Um, I actually got this thing without the module in it, I just got it as an amp, and it is a great amp, and then um, shit, shit lets you either send it back to them and they'll put the amp in, or they'll put the, the uh, card in, or you can do it yourself. It's not hard, um, they've designed these boxes very well, it's pretty easy to service it yourself. Um, so I, I did it just to kind of save the delay in shipping, and I think it's a little bit more expensive if they do it. Um, but anyway, if you order from them uh, with it originally, then that's kind of a non-issue. And that's kind of how we get this thing right in line with the monolith. So let's look at that guy. So this guy, despite his larger scale, is actually like, feels feather light uh, compared to the shit. This is another like really lovely build, but in a very different way, um, where the shit's kind of you know heavy and all everything's overly thick. This feels a bit more delicate um, um, and sort of a bit more consumer electronic-y, a bit more modern. Um, you know, on the back side, you're gonna see um, a lot of very similar ins and outs. Um, now, since this is just always the same configuration, it's always the same DAC, which is uh, also a KM chipset, a 4493. There's a pair of those since this thing is, you know, fully balanced. Uh, and also this guy uh, is rocking THX on the output, uh, a pair of AAA 788 modules, um, which is really why I bought this and what got me excited about it. Um, heard a lot about how interesting the THX sound was and, and wanted to experience it. Um, but anyway, since this, this guy's all on board, you're also getting uh, optical and coax as well as USB. Um, so DC barrel in here because it's a separate wall wart power supply or inline cord power supply. <clears throat> Pretty similar in front. Uh, you got your uh, four pin XLR balanced out. Your quarter inch balance out and then this guy's got a screen i'm sorry i don't i'm plugged in right now it's got a nice little white on black display and and one of the major sort of differences in these two is that on the shit side you've got um you know very just analog circuitry um you know you're just moving that signal through the path um and and, and it's it, it's simple in a wonderful way on the um monolith THX side you've got uh, is all digital and, and it is thinking very hard about it, what's moving through it and is working very <laughs> hard with the latest technology to really um, push that sound signature and uh, the difference is very obvious if you take a pair of headphones and you plug these into the shit first and then into the, the THX when you plug them into the THX, all of a sudden you get all this like space and dynamics. You get a ton of separation. Um, everything, um, you know, starts to, you, you can pick out these little details, these little nuances. Um, and when I first got this thing after having the, the Jotunheim for a long time, I was like, well, this thing's just obviously better. It's awesome. It's super high tech. It sounds amazing. Everything's like poppy and separated and cool. Um, I don't think it's quite that cut and dry after having them both and listening back and forth for a while. I think that um, that the, the the sound and the experience of, of of listening to this and 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 getting to hear that 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 um, 
sort of hyper articulate separation and spaciousness is really fun and rewarding but you know it's also in some ways a little less musical it's in some ways a little bit more fatiguing uh, it tends to feel on certain headphones a bit sort of thinner strained maybe a little bit bright um, take for example the uh, uh, Odyssey LCD 2C right it's a very warm very dark thick uh, rich headphone you put that on the on the Jotunheim and it's sort of too much same same it just gets a little rich a little overwrought a little heavy it starts to get muddy um, you put that on uh, on this on the monolith and you know that sort of detail and separation that it brings to the table works really well with that headphone and together you get a really nice pairing um, you know like I said before the the Focal which is a little bit more um, sort of focused and articulate it, I prefer it on the ship because I, I need some warming up it needs some musicality and, and so I guess that's kind of where I end up when I when I think about these two DAC amp balance DAC amp combos is that um, you know the monolith is is really going to be um, pushing uh, sort of what modern technology can do the amount of detail and separation and space um, and imaging that um, technology can bring to the table uh, and you know on the, on the other side shit is sort of gonna um, just respect <laughs> uh, respect the musicality of the recording and just kind of give it to you in a in a big bold and, and punchy way um, yeah so there you go I don't, there's no wrong choice here I think both of these are absolutely brilliant um, I think both of them for 500 bucks are um, you know right in line with the market and, and both good buys I, w I will say this though um, the promise of a DAC amp combo right is that it's sort of set it and forget it um, you you are making a trade-off of, of removing the idea of having separates for the convenience of just a single box you turn it on it's connected to your computer or your phone or whatever and and you just play and listen to the music and that's that's great um, I of course got curious and started plugging in different DACs to both of these what I found um, just using for example um, the uh, SMSL SU8 which is a DAC I know and love and trust and, and I did a little review of uh, the other day um, <clears throat> when you when you plug that into the shit I think the shit gets much better because I don't think that the the, the DAC and I haven't tried the multi-bit version which is another hundred dollars so that wouldn't really make it a fair comparison but um, I haven't tried the multi-bit which is is supposed to be better um, but the, the, I, I do think the the DAC that you can get with this unit kind of lets it down because when I plugged in what I considered which is a very affordable it's like a $200 DAC but I think it's a great one when I plugged that in I, I think this thing really came alive it got more detailed smarter there's a lot of texture in it it's just it's just it's just better and the amp is great it's just a great amp and it can really it's got the oomph it's got a ton of power I mean I forget the uh, the output stats off the top of my head but I'm pretty sure this is significantly more power than this guy it, just in the amp portion right now when I uh, inversely tried the uh, SMSL SU8 um, uh, paired with uh, the monolith it sounded worse because this is a combo where all the circuitry is dialed in and it is working together to create what it is trying to create and what it's trying to achieve um, and I think that's what you're sort of asking for in a DAC amp combo right you're, you're it's not that you're giving up the idea of separates because you can always plug something into this they both have inputs but what you're ideally getting when you buy a combo unit is something that's so well sort of engineered uh, to be a, a whole and complete thing and I guess this thing is more of a whole and complete thing and this thing is a great amp that they allowed you to put a DAC inside of and so I guess to, to kind of wrap it up sum it up I'd say if you want a set it and forget it um, kind of all-in-one device that's got a, a lot of uh, a lot of interest uh, a lot of auditory interest and a lot of detail and separation and you like a really articulate sound this is a great combo 
this has a ton of settings you can tweak it's got the the EQ on this thing that you can go in and just tweak different frequency ranges and bump them up and down various dBs and how big the bump is and how I mean you can get really you can nerd out on this thing and that's cool um, there's no screen on this thing <laughs> there's no settings it is really a, a great amp that happens to allow you to put a DAC inside of it and so I'd say for an all-in-one this is less successful although maybe this is my preferred amp of the two amps um, yeah let's call it good there thanks so much for watching please give me a subscribe I'm gonna keep keep putting together these videos I'm, I'm having fun and I appreciate everyone's feedback so far um, if you've got suggestions topics uh, ideas I welcome them I encourage them um, so yeah subscribe like be safe be well uh, enjoy the music. This is Adrian A.K. Signcraft signing out.